Hi again, everyone. We are welcoming Radu Ignat, Université Paul Sabatier and IOF, Institut de Mathématiques de Toulouse, who will give the last talk for today titled uh, Domain Walls with Non-Local Interaction and Their Renormalized Energy in Thin ferro Ferromagnetic Films. Okay. Welcome, Radu. Uh, thank you, Wafa, and uh, thanks to the all organizers for the nice invitation. As I said before, I would really like that and hope that in the future we could meet uh, all of us uh, in, in the nice Beirut. So uh, hopefully all these delicate times uh, will finish soon. So, um, okay, so, so my talk is about a non-local model coming from a thin film, um, a thin film ferromagnetism. Uh, where we will have some uh, domain walls and um, and uh, our aim would be to uh, understand the interaction between uh, these domain walls. So to understand how non-locality uh, plays a role there. So uh, let me go directly to the model. So here um, I will consider uh, 1D maps that will take values in the unit circle. So M is from magnetization. So we will have two components, M1, M2. So they are defined in R with values in S1. And uh, for a um, small parameter, epsilon, we will have an energy that is given by epsilon M prime squared. Then we will have um, a non-local term, which is the H1 half norm of M1 that I write like this. So the first component. And then we will have um, an isotropy term where, uh, where this potential W is a double well potential that I take on this form, that is M1 minus cos alpha for some angle between zero and pi, okay? So if I draw here the target space S1, so this is M1, this is M2, then we will have here two wells. So two wells uh, in EI alpha and E minus alpha okay so uh okay so so, so previously uh marco uh presented um, uh, a model where we had only the first term this first term which is the uh, exchange energy and um okay so as he said uh, due to that term here uh, this order parameter would like to align so to have this parallel alignment so like a constant uh, map this anisotropy then will say that okay then you would prefer to be uh, within uh, these two directions because there uh, this anisotropy is zero and and then uh, you have this term that is the most important term in this, um, in this model that is called the stray field energy that I explained in the following. So in general, you have a, a stray field potential U that, that is defined in R times R plus, so, so this is X, that's like the direction of the thin film. And that's um, another direction Y that solves uh, the following problem. Laplacian of U is zero if Y is positive. And then you have a Neumann condition that this is given by M1 prime. Okay, so then the stray field energy is the gradient of U squared. And if you do the computation, that leads you exactly to what I wrote above. So this is the H1 half norm uh, of M1. Okay, 
So, uh, so um, we'll be mainly interested in uh, transitions between uh, these two wells. So this is what we will call uh, domain walls. And this epsilon will play the role of the length scale uh, for, uh, for these uh, domain walls. Okay, so mainly uh, what could happen is that you will make a transition from this to, to this, for example. Okay, so, so if I draw here the direction X, then you will go from uh, EI alpha. At some point, you will reach uh, minus one. Okay, so, 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 so you turn uh, um, counterclockwise. So you do something like this. So this is the, where you, you reach uh, minus one, okay? And then you continue the turn and then you reach the other uh, well. Or you could do, uh, or you could do, um, so this is like turning on the, on the large arc. But of course you could, uh, you could do the turn also on the other direction, okay? On the small arc. And like this, you will go on plus one, okay? So, so you do this. So, so you, here you turn, turn clockwise and you do something like this, okay? So this is what I will call in the following a plus domain wall. And uh, I will call uh, minus uh, uh, domain wall if, I, if we go on the larger arc, so going to minus one. Okay, and so we will be interested here in uh, looking at the asymptotic behavior of this energy when epsilon goes to zero. So, for example, looking at minimizers under some topological constraints, or more generally in the terms in the sense of gamma convergence. Okay, so uh, so what are these domain walls? Oops, sorry, Radu. Can yes. you tell us uh, what is the well, if any. <laughs> What is the meaning of this uh, physical meaning of this uh, penalizing term? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so 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 let me go back then. Okay. So so um, so the stray field. Uh, you, you mean the stray field, right? Yes. 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 Exactly. Okay. So 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 the stray field is um, um, okay. So, 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 so in general is, is, um, is a curl-free uh, field. So it's a gradient that will penalize the divergence of the magnetization, okay? But here uh, I consider magnetizations that are 1D. So, uh, so depending only in the variable X1, like this, let's say. So the divergence, in fact, it's exactly this M1 prime. Okay, so 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 uh, so, so, so this um, so this tray field is curl free and its divergence is given by the divergence of M. Okay. Yeah. So, 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 so but of course this is in thin film, so the thickness of the film is going to zero. So then the the stray field is living in the um, in the full space. So so this Neumann condition is like giving by the measure on the on the plane. Okay. So Thank so you. that's the okay. So then let's uh, let's move to uh, to expand these domain walls. Okay, so, so uh, what are these domain walls? In fact, they are called nail walls. Okay, so as I said, they are transition layers uh, between uh, those two wells. So between EI alpha and E plus I alpha. Okay, and then uh, as I said, uh, we uh, let's have uh, so we'll have like a plus nail. So where the transition is done uh, on the on the small on like this on the small arc. Uh, okay, so 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 uh, and and then we will have minus nail. 
where the transition we will be done in on the on the large arc. Uh, okay, so so let's say I, I said uh, EI minus alpha. Okay, so let's do like this. Okay, so we will go to minus one here. Okay. So here, what is very important since uh, the stray field pain penalizers only M1 is to understand how this M1 behaves. So the component M1. So, so what is M1 doing here? Well, it's going from uh, cos alpha to one. Okay, it's doing something like this. Okay, what about here? So here, it's going from cos alpha, that's the axis x, to minus one, okay? So it's doing something like this, okay? So that, that's uh, the, uh, the M1 component. So, so then you, you can ask, okay, because uh, let's say we, we look to the optimal transition. So uh, how you can get this? Well, you just uh, minimize uh, minimize that energy over uh, the constraint that uh, M1 of zero is one because the energy is, uh, scale, is uh, a transition a translation invariant. So you have to fix the, uh, the center of the wall. And here, well, you minimize uh, under the constraint that uh, M1 of zero is minus one. And then you get uh, uh, you, you get uh, such, uh, such domain walls. And for these minimizers, the structure is, is well understood. So what is the structure? of these uh, domain walls, where the particularity is that there are two length scales objects. So you will have a core of lengths epsilon, well, up to log. And you will see that later, in fact, we will, the, the, the good uh, scale is in fact epsilon log epsilon. I will come back to that later. And two tails with logarithmic decay. So let me explain. So here, so you will have a core. So that's the epsilon that penalizes the uh, exchange, uh, the exchange energy. So that's the core. And then you have here tails. Okay, so here you have tails. And on these tails, what will happen? So up to an order one, you will behave like a logarithm. Of course you have to, um, sorry, log X. Uh, that, that you have to rescale by log epsilon. And then uh, at the end of the tails, so over here, you behave, you, you have a, a quadratic decay, okay? So, 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 so uh, this is a series of works. So, so starting with the uh, De Simone, Kohn, Müller, Otto, then um, Christoph Melcher, and also uh, with uh, Roger, we did, um, we did some, some improvement that's there. But what, what we, are, we will be very interested is in the energy of this. So what is the energy of such a transition layer? Okay, so, 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 so this energy will be proportional with the height, uh, with the height of, um, of, of the wall, which is here, uh, one minus cos alpha. And here, let me put uh, like a sign uh, height. So gamma is minus one minus cos alpha, okay? So the energy is proportional to the squared of this and is very small. It's like order of one over log epsilon. And uh, let me give you a hint why it's like this. 
Well, in the energy, as I said, the most, the dominant term is the, um, um, the straight field energy, which is H1 half nor. But here you have a constraint that is M1 equal one. So in some sense, you want to, um, to control the L infinity norm, but you know that H1 half fails to be embedded in, in L infinity. So that's why when you have such a, a failing embedding, then you expect that if you have some uh, control, it will be logarithmic. And this is thanks to the fact that we added this uh, H1 norm and, and the anisotropy, okay? Uh, okay. So uh, let me tell you that uh, the most, uh, so the important part of the energy is really coming from these uh, tails. Okay. But, okay, so this is one wall, but we are interested in, in uh, several walls. Okay, so that's where the things are uh, more interesting. So, so let me give you two scenarios that, uh, that, that um, is important in the following. So we are interested when we have several nail, several walls. Oops, it's several. Uh, Radwen, for the, the other wall, you got the same? Yes, 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 of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you just, yeah, nothing, yeah. It, it's, it's exactly the same. Okay, okay so, so uh, several walls. So, so here we have two scenarios. So what physicists called winding and unwinding walls. Okay, so let's let me put here a winding. I will consider here only two. So winding walls and unwinding walls. Uh, okay, so so let me draw again. Uh, S1 with the two wells. So, so what is, what is um, a winding wall? We will do first a trans, whoops. We will do first a transition, a, a minus one transition, okay? And then uh, we will continue uh, by, by filling the, the full term, okay, with the plus. So this is a, a winding wall because, okay, at the end you have this degree one, uh, so one winding. Okay, what is unwinding? So, so if here we have like uh, different signs of, of walls, here we will have the same sign of walls. So either, either we do, uh, we, we go like the oops we, we we go like this okay so we put the minus one and then we come back okay so at the end topologically we didn't do anything or of course you you can do uh you can do with pluses you could go like this and then to come back Okay, so so as I said, uh, understanding M one is the key thing here. So so in fact, let, let me uh, let me not uh, look to M one, but to M one minus cos alpha. Okay, because like this, I have I pass through zero. So what I do here, well, I, I go from so this is so what what is F is doing is going from zero. To uh, so, so here we will have so here we will have uh, minus one minus cos alpha anyway it's negative a and then we have uh, like this okay so this is uh, where I have uh, the plus and here is where we have the minus okay and what's happening here well here I have bumps. Oh, sorry, that, that's zero. Yeah, I said that I, 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 uh, I look to uh, F that is M1 minus cos alpha, so this is zero. 
Okay, so 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 so, so both will stay uh, will have the same sign. I, I let's say that this is the blue thing. So then when we so if you if you uh, withdraw the exchange and the anisotropy and you just keep the H one half norm, then what will happen here is that here you will have repulsion, while here you will always have attraction. So, so how you see this? Uh, uh, so, so this is so the hint is that um, so so you just look at the H one half norm. So of course uh, it's H one homogeneous. So that I put F for M one is the same. Okay. Uh, well, in general you have a coefficient in front. So I, let let me write it with this double integral, and I forgot the one over two pi or this there, which is f of x minus f of y squared over x minus y squared. So when you do the computation, if you call that this is f1 and this is f2, uh, so, so this is, you will get that this is f1 squared plus f2 squared. And then you will have this interaction term, which is minus four on the support of F1, support of F2, of F1 of X, F2 of X of Y over X minus Y squared. So here, what you see? Uh, well, when it's winding, so this term, when it's winding, so when you have winding, F1 and F2 have different signs. So, so with the minus in front is positive. So this means what? It means that uh, this norm is super additive, meaning that it's better if these two bumps separate each other. The energy is smaller, okay? And if you go with the unwinding, you see that, so in the one, in, in the unwinding, this is negative. So they, they would like to, to collide if, for example, you put the flow or something, okay? So, so this is really the main thing that you should uh, uh, keep in mind is that when you have different signs, they would like to separate. If you have the same sign, they would like to, uh, to collide. So a situation where such, such thing happens is when you have this, what is called topological nail walls, is where you uh, prescribe, where you prescribe uh, a total uh, winding number. Okay. Uh, are there questions up to now? So please, please interrupt me if you have questions. Okay. So so let's go to uh, so a situation where you will see that this scenario is is fundamental. Is this called topological nail walls? So here you, you minimize the energy. Um, so, so, so you minimize the energy uh, under a prescribed uh, winding number. So, so it's like looking to transition layers. Uh, so of course, between uh, E plus minus I alpha. Uh, with the prescribed uh, winding number. So, so what is a winding number? Well, you look, which is the amount of the phase that you have. So of course, since, uh, since you have uh, two wells that are, um, that have an angle here, so, so of course you always you can always do a full um, round on on S one, but uh, you can also uh, uh, like like for the plus uh, nail wall you do only alpha over pi, right? So so, so the the winding can be uh, in this set. Okay. So um, so, so the question is. 
when when can you actually have such a minimizer? I mean, of course, it's a, a concentration compactness uh, there. And this is, uh, as you know, can you have uh, a splitting? Okay, like a dichotomy. And, and this is where the attraction and the repulsion is, is essential. So um, uh, let, let's, uh, let's give an example. So, so for the degree uh, uh, two minus alpha over pi. So, so here I do this. Okay, so this is the first one. So this is a, a plus wall. I continue. Okay, with the so this this is the second part with the sorry this is minus. Right, this because I go to minus one. So so this is plus because I go to plus one, and then. I do another one, okay, another minus. So that's the third part, okay? So this is what typically you, you, you expect. So, so uh, everything that I do here, I can do when alpha is small enough. Why? Because I want to have small bumps and big bumps. So what is the, the image here in M1? So I started with a big bump, okay? This is the minus. I continue with the small bump and then with the big bump, negative big bump. So what did I say? Well, these two big bumps will attract each other. So, 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 so they attract each other. Of course, here you will have a small repulsion, but, but here you, you should think that this is small. Okay, so what's happening here is that the repulsion is much stronger. So in, you should imagine that here is like a sandwich, a big sandwich, that that uh, that keeps what's in the middle. Okay, so this one will be stable. So in the sense that you can um, you can realize it. And okay, and let's see what's happening if uh, we have uh, d in z or d in z uh, plus alpha over pi. Okay, so, so, so let me uh, imagine that we did, uh, so, so we went from here to here, closing the, the, the circle, continuing like this, and now I will add another one here. I will foot, uh, feel like this. So, so for, for d equal to, what is, is that I, I, I just add, right, uh, um, a small arc here, well, this transition, which is a small bump. So then what will happen? So of course, these two still attract very well, but here, this repulsion, even if it's small, we say, well, I, I, I want to separate here, okay? So here you will have a separation, okay? So this is in fact the theorem. So 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 uh, this is what we proved with Roger Moser that that in fact uh, these topological topological nail walls they exist if uh, and only if the degree is um, is like L minus alpha over pi, well, L is uh, an integer starting with one. And uh, they don't exist in the other case. So uh, L or L plus alpha over pi, provided that the, the angle is small. So it's between some zero and alpha D, okay? And uh, what is, as I said, we will be always interested in the energy. So what is the energy? So um, we still have the energy uh, that appeared before, which is uh, proportional with the so, so that's like, so if this is the first one, second one, third one, so this is gamma one, 
the height. This is gamma two, the height, and gamma three. Okay, so it's proportional with the, the height square over log epsilon. And then, in fact, the next order term comes to log log epsilon over log epsilon square. So the first computation of this was done by uh, uh, De Simone con Muller and Ott. Okay, but in fact, what will be interested in the following is to understand this term where we have the interaction. Okay, so 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 you know in Ginzburg Landau, uh, in order to understand this uh, what is called the renormalized energy. Well, you, you need to know where are the limit, um, uh, the, the limiting uh, vortex positions, okay? So, so you need, uh, in some sense, some compactness for the Jacobian here. You don't have a Jacobian, but uh, you will um, treat this in terms of the phase. So, so the next result is first, I will explain the compactness, then the separation, and then we will go to compute the, uh, this renormalized energy. Okay, so let's move forward. So, so compactness. So, Radu? Yes. Yeah, just to make sure that I understand, when you say topological networks exist, you mean there exists a minimizer for the energy function, right? E yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah, 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 right. So, uh, 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 yeah, so I'm not saying that you cannot have some local minimizers uh, 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 having, for example, an integer degree. May I add a question? So you, yes, you said yes, that yes. You have, um, your alpha is to be small, but smaller depending on D. So yes. you, what do you mean? That if you fix the degree, then there is an alpha depending on the degree? Yeah, exactly, exactly. OK, exactly. okay thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so this is where we explain compactness and the separation. Okay, so, so, so now uh, the main thing is that we have to think in terms of the phase. So, so, so the phase would like to be in, in the, on the well, right? And these wells are like minus alpha plus alpha plus some uh, two pies, right? So, 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 so typical, uh, the typical uh, figure is that let's, let's say that we go from minus alpha to alpha. Then, so, so this is, uh, this is, uh, we, 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 we went on, on the, on the small arc. So this is a plus. Okay. Then, then uh, let's say that I continue with the big one two pi minus alpha, so, so this is minus. And then let's say that I continue with the, um, uh, with the small plus one, and then I'm, I'm coming back, okay? So, 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 so what did I do here? So, uh, I, I started with the small. So, so, so once you fix such a phase, then of course the the how you wind the circle is obvious, right? You can do it only in a in a unique way. So, so, so we did. Oops. We did this. So this is one. Then, then we did. We continued like this two. Then, then we continued like this three. And then we came back. Okay, so, so what's the compactness result? So, 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 so as I explained up to now is that every, every transition is like one over log epsilon scale. So, so if, if the energy stays like, like this, then you expect to up to, up, uh, so for a sequence, uh, you expect that these phases will converge to a limit phase in L2 log or in any LP, P, uh, P less than, uh, P less than, uh, than infinity. In fact, such a bound will tell you that the phase is uh, uniformly bounded. So all these phases are uniformly bounded. 
And so, so, so this phase, you, you imagine, right? I mean, here the scale is like epsilon. So, so you have this kind of uh, BV function that will take the values only in two pi uh, Z plus minus alpha. And, and um, the, the derivative is this sum of, of, um, of sigma uh, of, of, of uh, Dirac masses. So, so imagine that uh, here is like A1. Here is where the second transition takes place, A3 and A4. But, but but this can also collide okay so 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 so, so here um a1 I, let me put it like this why i put it uh, why i do like this because i want that uh, these jumps uh, they always stay uh, between uh, so they are less than 2 pi so so they could go 2 alpha or 2 pi minus 2 alpha but for example, when they collide, you, you should th uh, think to this jump in a monotonic way. So for example, if these two jumps come together, so, so you will have a transition from minus alpha to two pi uh, plus alpha. So, so there, there is a unique way to write this. So this is a unique representation, provided that you ask that um, the sum of two uh, consecutive ones is two pi. Okay, so if you like more Ginzburg Landau, this is like the, the thing that you have in general for uh, the Jacobian. Okay, and now we said that uh, so so we, we, we are interested. When do we have separation? So 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 when we have jumps that that could go um, with the size only uh, like these simple walls, like uh, uh, two alpha or two pi minus two alpha. So for the separation, uh, what you do? So so first of all, uh, first of all, um, as I said, in fact, the, the the good length scale is epsilon log epsilon for the core. And uh, let's prescribe. Um, so so, so phi is this limit one. And let's take uh, this uh, quantized energy that's coming with with these transition layers which is like a uh, by sum of this gamma k squared, which in terms of, of sigma are like one minus cos sigma k over two squared, okay? And the separation I can do here only if the angle is big, okay? So this is the difference with what I say, because I don't, I want that the, the bumps are quite close one to another. So this is the n I have here. So 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 uh, the dependence is something like this, and this theta n is like close to pi over two. So so you should imagine that the bumps are are now uh, equal size. And the theorem is the following. So if the energy is like prescribed by this uh, this quantized energy given by the limit. log delta now and i can put only log delta squared okay then phi is simple in the sense that all these jumps are separated so in terms of gins bulandau this is uh what you do in order to say that well all your vortices are are degree uh, plus one or minus one right so 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 you will prescribe that the amount of energy stays exactly in in uh, the energy given by this uh, separated uh, vortices of degree plus plus minus one okay so so uh, okay, and of course, once you have one, once you have such a jump, then of course you can define, uh, let's say, the equivalent of the degree or of the sign of of the of of the nail. So so this is um, uh, this is one. If uh, if if the jump is uh, 
is a two alpha. So if you have a, a plus a plus nail and minus if uh, the jump is is a two pi minus two alpha. Okay, and now now I'm in a position to give you what's the the renormalized energy. Okay, so what's what's this renormalized energy here? So this is the energy interaction, which is the main point. So 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 let me put it like in terms of uh, of gamma convergence, even if I don't say what's a gamma convergence. So so I will give you the the lower bound of the energy, but of course that could be also uh, an upper bound if you construct a good um, recovery sequence. So if phi epsilon converges to phi, and this phi is is simple, so all all, all the walls are, are separated. So, so since since I assume here that phi is simple, I don't need any more uh, the constraint of the angle. So it could be big or small. I don't care. Then the energy, so of course m, m epsilon is ei phi epsilon, so limit is larger than, so this quantized one, delta, so delta, I recall delta is epsilon log epsilon. And now we have Uh, that energy that governs, in fact, the, the positions that is, as usual, uh, uh, core energy that depends only on the sign of the walls. And then we have this uh, renormalized energy. So here A is where the jumps takes place and D is the sign of the jumps. Okay, so so what is uh, what is this uh, energy? So here, this energy is uh, given by so, so 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 gamma k gamma gamma n are the the heights of of those jumps. And here we will have a, a function that I explained. And okay, we have uh, an additional term, but which uh, depends on the, on the degree. So, so it doesn't uh, depend, it doesn't depend on the positions. Okay, so, 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 so this is uh, the function that uh, we are interested in. L let me don't, I will just tell you how, how this behave. So, so it behaves like, like a logarithm when t goes to zero and like one over t squared when t goes to infinity. It's like, if you want, it's like the tail of a nail wall. Uh, so, 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 so how, how much time, uh, do I still have five minutes? Yes, if you want, uh, you have uh, two minutes, but five minutes is okay also. Okay, thank you, thank you, Wafa. Very nice. Uh, okay, because I just want to say um, what is so. In fact, this phenomenology is very different from Ginzburg Landau. So, first of all, you saw that when we had a plus wall and the minus wall, we had repulsion, which in Ginzburg Landau, when you have a plus uh, one vortex and a minus one vortex, then they would like to, to come together, okay? So 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 um, so so here the phenomenology is really different. And okay, if you ask me at the end, uh, I, I can. So if I don't succeed to to say this, I can um, uh, be more detailed there. But just let me tell you that now, uh, of course, what you would like to see is to, to know where 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 is the, the the optimal position of of this snail was. And let me tell you that in fact. Uh, in all the situation we know, there is no minimizer. And let me explain why. Uh, 
So, so first of all, due to this uh, logarithmic uh, uh, interaction, if 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 you put two walls with the with the same sign, okay. So if you put two walls with the same sign, then of course uh, this, as I said, you will have attraction. So 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 uh, the infimum uh, will be uh, minus infinity. So of course there you don't you cannot have any. Okay. So therefore, if you hope to have some some minimizing thing, then then the the signs should alt alternate, like for the topological nail walls. Okay. So you should have sign changing. So 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 so, so uh, uh, you could have something like this: plus one, minus one, plus one, etc. Or d minus minus one plus one minus one, etc. Okay, but uh, but but even in this case, th th there is uh, there there is uh, there is no minimizer. Uh, Okay, so, so so in fact, it's a conjecture. Uh, there is no minimizer in the cases where we know. So, for example, n equal to okay, n equal three, or n even. Okay, so in these two cases, we we, we have a proof that there, there are no minimizers. But in fact, we believe that there are no minimizers. At, why? Well, because okay, so so this uh, sign changing will tell you, okay, they could not come together, but but see at infinity, you are one over T squared. So 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 uh, maybe they would like to separate, okay? And uh, okay, I stop here. And if you are interested, then I will go to really emphasize more about the differences with the uh, Ginsburg Landau and how in fact, how this um, um, phenomena of attraction repulsion that is different than Ginsburg Landau is uh, given by um, the interaction between tails and core tail uh, in here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Radu, for the interesting talk. Okay, now we are waiting for questions. Yeah, it's Nicola from Lyon. Yes, I, hi, Nicola. Uh, I'm not sure, so uh, I'm not sure I, uh, I understand the, 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 the very last part. Uh, Probably okay. because because you stopped uh, because you you run out out of time. So can you, so for n equal n even, so uh, do we understand that I have one too many wall and I want to go to infinity? Yes. Yeah. Right. 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 So, but so, for, so, so, the, so. for n equal three, what happens? The the, the two plus walls try to squeeze the the the, the, the other one. Uh, uh, so 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 so. Um, uh, Okay, let, let, let's. Uh, so, 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 uh, I, I know. So, 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 so th there is no minimizer. So, so in fact, um, um, okay, okay. Uh, I, I really don't know if uh, what will happen is that, okay, in, in what I explained about topological nail walls, you should understand that epsilon was fixed. Okay, so so there we you have this repulsion and okay, but this will will don't tell you uh, uh, this doesn't tell you what's happening when when epsilon goes to zero, so so uh, maybe for small angles, maybe for small angles you can have like a collision. So 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 it's it's uh, it's uh, uh, what you said. So so imagine that you have this and and this would would like to. Uh, collide in 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 a in in a single one like like this but uh but but if the if 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 the if the angle so, so this is small angle but but if the angle is large so so, so imagine that uh, the bumps are are quite uh, equal then of course you would like to have separation okay so here i i don't say anything about the angle so, so the angle can be anything. So, so, so I think both uh, both scenarios can happen. And uh, can never be uh, uh, can be be no made magic angle for which uh, things would equilibrate. Oh, well, I, so, so, so really here. Uh, so, when I say that there is no minimizer, the, any alpha. 
so so this is really okay so so uh, uh, okay if I, if I have a question <laughs> so I really want this question what's the difference with jeans Bulanda? I can really explain uh, uh, okay I'm asking the question go ahead <laughs> yeah. thanks Michele like this uh, friends uh, yeah okay so, so so yeah okay thank you okay so so what's happening what's happening here okay let's put uh, let's put two walls here. So the difference with respect to Ginsburg-Landau is that in Ginsburg-Landau the vortex has only one length scale, and in fact the renormalized energy is in fact the interaction between the tails. In here, in here the difference is the following: the you have also so so here you have two types of interaction. You have tail-tail interaction, and you also have core-tail interaction. And the new phenomenology is that if I call this TT, this interaction, this is minus two times TT. So, 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 so in here, the, the, the new phenomenology is that uh, this one is dominating. So that's why, that's why you have repulsion where in Ginsburg-Landau you, you expect for attraction and, and vice versa. And why? So let me explain you why this core, when it interacts with this tail, uh, the energy is large. Well, because the thing is that these tails are logarithmically decaying. So, so they are not uh, like quadratic decay or uh, so, so they are really long. So, so this means that the angle here shifts like one over log epsilon. And so this means that in some sense, you change the angle here. So, 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 so the contribution between this one and, and, uh, and the tail here is much larger than, than uh, the interaction between uh, these two tails. So, so really first time when we computed this renormalized energy, we, we thought that we were, mistaking about, uh, we, we were mistaking about the sign here. But in fact, okay, then we understood uh, the new phenomenology, okay. Thanks. Thanks, Michele, for because yeah, this is what they really want to you welcome. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, Radu. So what question do you like us to ask you? No, 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 no more one. No more one. <laughs> yes, no more one. Uh, I'm okay. not sure I understand uh, still uh, very well, uh, Radu. So in in some cases you have existence of minimizers uh, at the epsilon fixed. Exactly. Yes. Uh, but then you don't know whether they converge uh, to something. So what does it mean? It means what does it mean about their renormalized energy? It's uh, uh, it, it, you 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 are perfectly right. Uh, so 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 Etienne, uh, again. So so uh, the existence of these topological nail walls. We did it for epsilon one, if you want. Okay, fixed epsilon. Mm -hmm. But but uh, that analysis that analysis. Uh, when you look to the cases where you have dichotomy and uh, or compactness there is they are depending in the angle okay and 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 also uh, if you put an epsilon in uh, there it they will depend on epsilon so we didn't carry out the computation when epsilon goes to zero but of course now so we said okay let's see what's happening with this renormalized energy but of course uh, here we see that okay there is no minimizer so something something is happening and there are the two scenarios that i i i, I said to nicola but again uh okay <laughs> i just know that that i don't have any minimizer uh so 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 uh that, that yeah so these two scenarios uh, could happen uh, is is just that I, I I know so for any even but any even it's it's easy because there okay you really should have separation is that you don't have critical point at all so 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 in some sense that also answers uh, the question of uh, Nicola uh, if um, local minimizer would exist but okay that's a asymptotic thing uh, but but. Uh, okay, so, so so there is still there are still open questions that uh, okay we don't understand uh, quite well when epsilon goes to zero. Okay, thank you, Etienne. And let's see if we have more questions. So 
So no. Perhaps another one. If, I, yeah, I ask yeah. another one if there are, if the, nobody uh, goes for yeah. it. So, so it, it, I think it's just a, a, a verification. So for this mean uh, result at um, finite epsilon, in the case where there is no minimizer, can you prove that the minimizing sequences so converge in some sense to to a guy the, the next guy which has the smallest admissible degree see you start from a degree oh. that has no sorry uh, oh right 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 oh, 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 okay okay right right i, I mean this is uh, right i mean you, you uh, then you will be in uh, in in like uh, uh, so 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 over here for example if i had uh, such a thing here so 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 of course right you will have like a dichotomy so 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 this is what you expect so so it's like uh, okay then then since this will go here and uh, this composite thing uh, will go here then of course if you depending where you look then of course you will go to a degree uh, that is uh, maybe the really the next one uh, uh, so, so this is like two here right i mean everything is degree 2 and then you will go to this one this uh, composite one uh, this this composite one which is degree uh, two minus alpha over pi so 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 right but 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 this is the guy i mean i mean uh uh it, it's really like for harmonic maps uh, so 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 uh you you would really go into another homotopy class yeah yes right thanks thank, thank you nicola one more question if someone likes Okay, so thank you so much, Radu. Uh, thank you. And thank you everyone for attending this long day and see you tomorrow in the last day of the conference. And until then, I wish you all a nice evening. Uh, I don't know if Ayman or Michael uh, want to no. add something. No, no, same time tomorrow, uh, we'll start again. Okay. See you tomorrow then. See you tomorrow. See you. See you. Bye. Bye-bye.